Imagine standing at the edge of a cliff in the Swiss Alps, ice-capped peaks towering above you. Your heart thrums with nervous excitement as you look down on the lush green valley, 3,000 feet below. Mark Sutton, legendary stunt double for Daniel Craig's James Bond 007 film, prepared for another daring adventure. Just one more in the list of his amazing exploits. The morning dawned bright and clear, perfect conditions. He stood on the narrow, rocky outcrop, his toes curling over the edge, as he gazed out at the magnificent Swiss mountain vista before him. A brisk wind whipped through the pass, rippling across the grassy alpine meadows, thousands of feet below. This was Mark Sutton's world, adrenaline and extreme adventure, and he was born to become one of the greats. From his days on the set of 007 to opening the 2012 London Olympics in a flying stunt, there was nothing that Mark Sutton was too afraid to do. Until August 14, 2013, when Epic TV, an extreme sports web TV channel, captured his last heartbreaking adventure with live footage. Join us as we uncover the horrific details of Mark's final moments, revealing the tragic incident that unfolded in the picturesque mountains of Switzerland. Mark Sutton's life of adventure started in the United Kingdom. He was born to Sir John Matthias Dobson Sutton, former Lieutenant Governor of the Island of Jersey, and Lady Angela Sutton, the daughter of a decorated World War II Hawker Typhoon pilot and commanding officer. Coming from a background of top achievers, Mark knew he had big shoes to fill. With a father who flew phantom fighter jets during the Cold War and a grandfather who was a decorated World War II pilot, a life in the sky seemed almost inevitable for Mark. Little did he know, he would be speeding through the clouds without the use of an advanced jet. It was clear that a life of adventure and passion were in the cards for Mark, so he followed the family business and joined the military. He received training at the Royal Military Academy of Sandhurst and ended up with one of the highest awards the Sword of Honor. This is no minor achievement. The Sword of Honor is given to the officer cadet who is considered the best of the intake. Mark's drive and commitment made him the perfect candidate for the harsh experiences of the military. He proved himself by earning a chance to lead the bravest of the brave as their captain. In December of 1991, he received an officer's commission to join the 6th Queen Elizabeth's own Gurkha Rifles. The Gurkha Rifles are one of the most feared regiments in the British Army. Most of their recruits come from Britain's oldest Asian ally, Nepal. However, exceptional cases are selected from the ranks of British soldiers. The Gurkhas are feared for their proficiency in close-quarters combat, knife fighting, and hand-to-hand -hand combat, their indomitable spirit, unwavering bravery, and resilience make them formidable foes on the battlefield. Being in the ranks of the Gurkha army clearly suited Mark's unbreakable will. His time in the Gurkhas coincided with a period of massive budget cuts to the army under Thatcher's conservative rule. The brigade of Gurkhas was reduced from 8,000 members to 3,500. Even with these challenges in the way, Mark still rose up in the ranks, earning himself the rank of captain. He served in places like Hong Kong, Brunei, and Nepal. He learned the language of his men and was a clear testament to the motto of the Gurkhas. There's no one quite like us. One can only imagine the brutal training conditions Mark underwent in the Gurkha army. Yet, he still persevered. It was probably in these conditions that Mark developed an addiction to adrenaline and a desire to live life on the edge. After his successful stint as a Gurkha captain, Sutton decided to change gears and explore other opportunities. While his reasons for leaving the army are not entirely apparent, his departure did not mark the end of his daring exploits. He left the army in 1995 to pursue a career in finance, eventually moving to London. At the time of his heartbreaking tragedy, he was actually working as a consultant for the Royal Bank of Scotland. Over the next few years, Mark used his determined spirit to build a lucrative career in the world of finance. It's unclear when he started skydiving and wingsuit flying, but it's evident that he had an unwavering commitment to the extreme sport, just like his other exploits in life. In September 2011, Mark was the project manager for the Wingsuit Landing Project. He had worked his way up to a professional level in this extreme sport, so his experience and knowledge was vital for this project. 
it was a world first that saw Gary Connery, a close friend of Mark's, be the first to land a wingsuit without the use of a parachute. You're not wrong in thinking this was absolute madness, but these are the extreme levels Mark and the wingsuit community would push themselves to. Using a long row of cardboard boxes, Gary Connery successfully landed his wingsuit with no parachute and, fortunately, no injuries. This was just one of Mark and Gary's extreme endeavors together. Three months after his Voltrack business was set up, Mark Sutton got a taste of mainstream fame during the opening ceremony of the 2012 Olympics. As the stunt double for Daniel Craig's James Bond, Mark Sutton skydived out of a helicopter high above the London Stadium. Accompanying him was Gary Connery, dressed as the Queen herself, complete with her dress and handbag. In true 007 fashion, they floated down to the stadium with Union flag emblazoned parachutes in what became a media sensation. It took three months of Mark and Gary training in secret to prepare for this stunt. The pair jumped just after billions of viewers were shown a scene of Daniel Craig as James Bond, collecting the Queen from Buckingham Palace. Many regarded Mark and Gary skydiving as the highlight of the show, drawing media attention and putting the pair in the spotlight. The event cemented Mark as a legendary figure in the world of skydiving. After the event, Mark's girlfriend, Victoria Homewood, posted a touching photo of the couple celebrating together. She put the caption, my very handsome 007, XXX. The successful stunt took place one year and eight months before his tragic death in Switzerland. Mark drew admiration by showing the impeccable concentration needed for a serious spare time interest and a good sense of humor that led friends to describe him as an all-around good bloke. So naturally, when Epic TV, an extreme sports web TV channel, decided to host an event with the best wingsuiters in the world, Mark Sutton was one of the first names to be invited. He accepted the invitation, completely unaware of the horrible fate that awaited him on the Swiss mountaintops. Twenty of the world's best wingsuiters were invited along with Mark and provided free food and accommodation in exchange for video footage of their wingsuit flights over the three-day event. On the 14th of August, 2013, the 21 talented wingsuit pilots were getting ready to jump. Bad weather and poor visibility delayed the first jumps, but once it cleared, these fearless individuals were rearing to soar through the clouds at breakneck speeds. Mark Sutton and longtime friend Tony Uragello were set to be part of the fifth batch of jumpers. They climbed into a helicopter with fellow jumpers Hubert Schober, Matthias Wyss, and Carlos Pedro Briseño. Five skydivers went up, but only four of them would make it back down. The helicopter ascended to 10,800 feet above the scenic Swiss landscape, giving the jumpers a view worth dying for. The first three jumpers sped through the sky and opened their chutes without a hitch. Then it was Tony and Mark's turn to go as a pair. Mark instructed Tony to follow his line, as he was the more experienced flyer. In one of the last pictures of Mark, you can see him giving the thumbs up right before his final jump. In tandem, the pair gracefully leapt from the helicopter, showing the world what two wingsuit professionals can do. Mark and Tony cut through the air, maxing out at speeds of around 155 miles per hour. The flight was supposed to last a full minute, but only 20 seconds in. The unimaginable happened. Mark veered off course, slamming into the ridge of a mountain at 125 miles per hour. Tony Urigello landed among the other base jumpers, alone and shaken. Looks of confusion and uncertainty flooded everyone's faces as Tony explained the shocking turn of events. No one could believe that this would happen to a man regarded as one of the best wingsuiters in the world. So, what really happened? Controlling a wingsuit requires the use of your whole body. It is no easy task, especially if you're inexperienced. Wingsuit flyers have to roll their shoulders, arch their backs, and use their hips and legs to control their flight. They also need to ensure that they travel on the correct path throughout the flight. This means that inches of movement could throw you off course. So how did an expert like Mark Sutton make such a mistake? In the episode released by Epic TV detailing this tragedy, Mark can be seen showing concern for the cloudy weather on that day. While the exact reasoning is unknown, it's believed a combination of poor visibility 
and human error led to Mark Sutton's fatal mistake. Later reports revealed that Mark didn't even have the chance to deploy his parachute. After the incident, Tony went up with a rescue helicopter to confirm that Mark was truly gone. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A spokesperson said he had no chance of surviving the impact. It was so severe, they required a DNA test to properly identify the body. This tragedy shook the wingsuit community, reminding everyone that even an expert can make mistakes. The extreme sport of wingsuiting is an especially dangerous one, with one in every 500 flights leading to a fatality. As heartbroken as the community was on that day, the Flyers decided to carry on with the event. Mark was known as a man of perseverance, bravery, and dedication, and they knew he would want the event to go on, especially in his honor. All those who knew Mark spoke of his fearless nature, whether he was jumping out of a helicopter or leading a squad of Gurkha soldiers. Gary Powell, a stunt coordinator for James Bond, said that Mark was an incredible person, always pushing the boundaries and living life to the fullest. He will be deeply missed by everyone who knew him. In a tweet after the incident, his close friend and jumping partner, Gary Connery, said, All you jumpers, flyers out there, stay safe. Make wise choices and know your limits and your locations. Live to tell your stories. As Mark Sutton himself said, Fear is a choice. Choose courage instead. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.